might take one more. I'll call the Honourable Todd McClay. Thank you, Mr Chair. I move that the question not be put because I want to uh, intervene in this part of the debate and talk about the Principal Act. I was not going to, but indeed, uh, when the Honourable Chris Remain spoke, uh, uh, I was moved to, as I'm the person that climbed to the top of the ladder, to get the paper copy of the bill to be able to come here and sit in the House and, and read it. Uh, and I'm going to ask my colleague to bring it over to me, if he would, because uh, I very much uh, believe it's quite important. No, it can take your time. I reckon I've got ten minutes in me for this part of the debate. Mr Speaker, the thing about this is that uh, there will be members in this House, in the opposition, who were in government at the time, when this piece of legislation, the Principal Act, went through, that didn't bother to read it back then. So they would have, uh, uh, been taking, would have taken part in the debate, they would have been in the House, they would have voted in favour of the Principal Act and they didn't read it. And today the hard-working member of Parliament, Paul Goldsmith, has brought an amendment to the Principal Act and I give you a guarantee, Mr, Mr. Chairman, that there are members in this House that were there in 2002, who were in government at the time, who are now in the opposition, that didn't read the Act back then, and now we have an important piece of legislation to amend the Principal Act to fix some of the challenges and problems that Mr Goldsmith found in it, and I'm sure they still haven't read the Act. And I, uh, too, uh, would say, when I came here and, and had an opportunity to look at this uh, draft piece of legislation, I hadn't read it. And that's why I went out the back and I climbed the ladder to the very top, got this piece of uh, uh, the, the New Zealand Statutes book, 2002, volume 2, numbers 31 to 49, and found the Principal Act and started to read it. And you know, Mr Speaker, I think to any member who uh, would take part in this debate from the opposition who, who wants to rush through this and is trying to get the House to vote on the different clauses before we are ready to, who hasn't read this, list, this legislation, the Principal Act, they're doing themselves in this House a great disservice because it's a very weighty piece of history of what this New Zealand Parliament has done. Now, uh, when one looks at the bill Mr Goldsmith has brought before us, it's not the largest piece of legislation we've had to debate in a members, uh, on a member's day. But when one looks at what he's trying to achieve and you take the different clauses in this and you come back to the Principal Act, it is clear that he has put great detail and thought into his uh, legislation uh, and that he at the same time has looked and found uh, inadequacies in the legislation that was passed by a Labour government in 2002 and he genuinely comes here to fix them uh, and he wants to make the lives of New Zealanders who are uncertain about their electronic transactions and the formation of contracts. He wants to make their lives better by diminishing, taking away that uncertainty. Uh, and I can say, uh, Mr Speaker, I can say to my colleague, I was going to stop at the next bell anyway, but what I can say to you, Mr Chair, is that that uncertainty that New Zealanders will be experiencing is unnecessary. Had the original movers of this bill some members opposite who are now in opposition that were members of the government in 2002 who voted on this legislation, who would have made speeches in this House, who might not have read the legislation. Had they have, they could have moved SOPs, they could have improved it, they could have spent the time that was needed in the committee stage, uh, uh, taken that extra bit of time in urgency to make the changes so that we wouldn't have to be here today, that the House could be doing other business that may or may not be more important but because Mr Goldsmith has had a close look at the Principal Act and Mr Goldsmith has found problems that are affecting New Zealanders and some members opposite didn't take the time to get the legislation right, well, Mr Speaker, that's why we need to be here right now. So can I say to uh, Paul Goldsmith, uh, oh, actually, Mr Speaker, I want to congratulate him on reading this lengthy piece of legislation. It actually is good legislation. It's detailed. It's quite technical. But in government, the Labour Party didn't get it right. Now, it could well be, and I want to give them the benefit of the doubt, because member days are, uh, uh, what did the last speaker say about jocularity or something like that? We studied in different places. But, Mr Chairman, I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. It could well be that some of the challenges, some of the difficulties Mr Goldsmith is fixing here with this legislation this year in our Parliament may not have been as obvious or as apparent 
uh, in 2002. The world has changed. Many, many more people are involved with electronic transactions. Thank you. The question is that Clause 3 stand part. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. To the contrary, no, the ayes have it. The question now is that Clause 4 stand part. Mr Chair. Call the Honourable Member Paul Goldsmith. Now, we come getting closer to the uh, meat of this uh, bill.